Hi, this is Irv Shakro, aka Dr. Vax, and this is a very exciting day at Dr. Vax Labs. I received a package from the People's Republic of China. Remarkably, I ordered this Endler 5, this Creality Endler 5 printer just seven days ago, the very first day I saw an announcement on the internet, and it came in a week. Really remarkable how small the world has become. Okay, now let's get ready. We're going to open up this box and see what's inside. I'm going to begin by cutting open the packet with the invoice, putting the invoice aside. This should match the invoice I received via email. Now I'm going to carefully open up the box Try not to cut into the inside. We'll spin this around here a little bit so we can get to this side. Okay, put my knife down. And uh, the top is just a solid piece of foam. That is actually a thin piece of foam. We'll set that aside. There is a Endler 5 printer guidebook to the chief evangelist, evangelist, the Endler 5 printer guidebook to make top quality 3D printer. And the overall instruction manual is 16 pages long. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to put that aside here. Another piece of plastic, but in this, I'm sorry, piece of foam. In this foam is the front panel. And I'm going to, let's see, make some room here. And start stacking these components. We have here, ah, the extruder. And uh, this is the extruder for the Bowden setup. Put that aside. Take another piece of foam out. Set it aside. Now we have the, I believe this is the top carriage. Uh, maybe not. We'll see in a minute. Okay. That one I'm going to set over here. Out of the way. This is really very well packed. Another piece of foam. And now we've gotten to the majority of the printer. I'll tip this up a bit without dumping my printer on the ground. And you can see how the actual frame is already assembled. All of the belts are already in place, something that's often difficult. So this is really quite nicely assembled. Um, this is in a single piece of phone. I'm going to leave it there for now and set that aside. We have a box of parts here, a uh, power supply, some screws, it does provide Allen wrenches, and some um, Allen keys, a screwdriver, and some small wrenches. Uh, there is a scraper tool in here. It's a removable plate, so I'm not sure why that will be necessary, but we will see. Okay, so we will set that aside in a safe place here. I'm going to power off my Prusa, which was on from a previous print. Okay, now inside we have the last set of components. And we'll take that out as a single unit and put that back down here move the box aside and what appears to be in here is a small mini roll of filament uh, this is PLA white it says it's CT tree it's 200 grams uh, the Prusa did come with a full roll of filament so I guess to save money they send you a smaller roll of filament we have here the main bottom frame. 
Um, and this had a couple bits of cardboard also holding it in. And now we have, these must be the side structures, the extruded aluminum side structures. So all of the electronics is in the base that is completely sealed. Um, and the wiring cabling seat was sort of just wrapped around the outside. So we'll take and we'll put that aside, that foam. We will take and bring back up the other components here. Take those out of the box. Aha, so this is the print bed. Very interesting. It's a magnetic print bed. It is not, it is completely flexible. It feels like just a sheet of magnet. Um, it does not, um, it is not spring steel like the uh, Prusa. We can see here that we have leveling dials. And if I compare the bed size, you can see in fact, this is very, very similar. The bed size, we'll put that over there. And the rest of the printer is here. Put this out gently because there are some limit switches on this printer. Okay. This appears to be the top assembly uh, with the stepper motors for the x-axis and the stepper motors for the y-axis. So, on okay, I'm going to basically record the assembly uh, but edit it and speed it up at various times because you don't need to watch me with read the manual. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start by reading the manual. Instructions on this printer are not as good as the Prusa. Um, as an example, it wasn't very, very clear exactly what direction these go in. It's sort of like IKEA instructions. Um, some pictures with some indications. Step two is to put on the top frame. I have the electronics facing me. Turn this back around. In looking at this printer, it almost seems as if it was, they assemble them at the factory and then they take them apart again because, oops, 
that wouldn't make any sense, but everything uh, does seem to fit very nicely. This moves very, very smoothly. There's a limit switch on one side, interestingly enough, not on the other. This is also nice and smooth. Limit switch on one side, not on the other. Okay, next, assembly step three, Z-axis frame. Okay, so that goes on the back. You might be noticing as I work on this that it looks like there's a bed for a router. Uh, the reason is there is. Um, I really like these Huffy tables. Um, they sell for $80 at Home Depot. I have three of them. One I actually use for a compound miter saw. One I have the Prusa sitting on. One I'll have uh, this printer sitting on. They're just very, very nice, um, sturdy tables and they're easy to assemble and disassemble and move around. So while they were uh, designed for use for as router tables or miter saws tables, I like them for general assembly tables. Okay, let's get the top, which is, uh, it's actually not the top, let's get the Z-axis frame that's going to mount here so that this can move up and down. Okay, I've completed assembly of this printer other than plugging the electric power in. It is interesting, the print head is completely assembled already. Um, and that's right here. It's much, much smaller than the print head mechanism on the Prusa. Um, it has a smaller heat block. Um, obviously, it's much smaller because it's a Bowden setup. So you just have the uh, hot end here and the motor is off on the other side. In the user's guide, I might have missed it, but there was no instruction for putting the Bowden tube into the um, filament um, drive motor, um, but I uh, did that. In addition, the actual connection of the wiring was a little bit tricky. Um, the instructions were very, very poor. I basically matched up colors with colors. There are a series of colored cables um, with connectors coming out of the power supply. There are a series of colored cables with connectors, power connections, other places on the printer. Um, there were two white and white wires, two white, double white wires with connectors. Uh, one was for the hot end, the other was for the print bed. I hope I have those in the right places uh, because there was no way to differentiate one from the other. Okay, I'm going to now uh, plug this thing in and we will see what happens. Okay, we're back. When I first turned this printer on after assembling it, nothing, zippo. No fans went on, the front panel did not light up, nothing, zippo. I went to my computer, I sent an email to Creality. Now, I know that since it's nighttime here, it may not be morning yet, working hours in China, so I didn't expect immediate reply. But then I decided, okay, I'm an engineer by training. How bad could it be? 
so I opened up the back cover on the power supply. I double checked that all the screws connecting to the AC power were uh, tight. One was a little bit loose, but then I noticed in the corner that there was a switch exposed to the outside that controls whether the printer is on 220 or 110. Actually, 240 or 120. Um, and I uh, put the cover back on the power supply, looked at the switch, it was in the wrong position. It wasn't necessarily obvious how to switch it. The whole switch mechanism slides side by side. Now, I guess it is good safety to set it for 240, so that way you can't blow up your printer by plugging it into the wrong outlet. However, in the instruction guide, there was nothing. Since I received this printer so early after it was announced, and the instruction guide looks like it was almost a color copy um, off an inkjet printer, it may be that they're still refining the process, and I'll drop them a note. Okay, we're ready to go. That concludes our build of the Endler 5. Overall, the build of the physical printer is easy. It's about an hour. It's much easier than the Prusa i3 MK3, uh, Mark III. However, the connection of the electronics is a little tricky because the manual was so poorly done. And there was a little guessing involved. Once again, I received this printer very early. I expect that will get better. Okay, I'm going to do some test prints, and then we'll have another comparison of the Endler 5 and the Prusa Mark III. Thanks for joining me at Dr. Vax. Have a great day.